Hello YouTube from Marion, Virginia. Uh, this is Sunsets and we are going to talk about week 8, which ended yesterday, uh, May 16th. Uh, so week 8 went uh, May 10th through May 16th. We started at a stealth campsite at mile 437.8 and ended at uh, Trippy Shelter in Virginia, 422.6. Uh, it was it was an interesting week uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, we got kind of sidelined in Damascus because of uh, weather. Uh, there was a one day that was going to be a uh, hundred percent chance rain, and we were already taking uh, a Nero day in to resupply at uh, Woodchuck Hostel. Uh, and we decided to take an extra day so we didn't hike in the rain. And man, we're glad we did. Uh, that day it just downpoured and it would have been miserable on the trail. We probably would have pulled up short somewhere anyway and set up the tent. Uh, Woodchuck Hostel was, was excellent. Uh, Woodchuck himself, uh, or Chuck, uh, was, was a great guy, wonderful host, uh, very comfortable, uh, we stayed in two different places because, like I said, we were just going to stay the night uh, and then add it on a night. So we only had one reservation. Uh, so the first night we stayed inside the house, which is much preferable to the second night where we stayed, which is the bunk room. Uh, we stayed in a room with four uh, very large beds. Uh, there was a comfortable space between everybody. Uh, there was a shared bathroom up there. Uh, the bunkhouse was, was a bunkhouse. It was, uh, you know, bunk beds, uh, top and bottom. Uh, so you had four, t two on top, two on bottom, uh, four, and then two uh, radiating out from there. So six, six uh, bunks basically in a shed with a light. And uh, you had to use kind of an outhouse uh, to use. It, it, was, it was plumbed, but uh, it was outside, so you had to leave the shed to go to the bathroom uh, or to take a shower uh, so it just wasn't as comfortable as the inside uh, but like I said you know if we would have known we would have scheduled two nights in, in, inside you save by five bucks a night instead of uh, 25 inside you pay 20 out in the shed uh, one thing interesting uh, the town uh, powers that be just passed an ordinance that tinting is no longer allowed at hostels on, on their grounds. And one of the ways uh, Chuck was able to make money, more money, uh, was to allow tinting. He has a pretty big spread, a uh, nice yard. I think it can hold oh, 20 or 30 tents. And uh, he was saying that, that he's lost quite a bit of business uh, because the, uh, the politicians determined that tinting, except for uh, the tinting on public land in, during trail days uh, is not allowed in, in the town. So, uh, you know, those decisions hurt, hurt the hostel owners quite a bit. Uh, great place to stay. Uh, if you're in Damascus, uh, check it out. So, uh, for the week, uh, so, so the second part of the week <coughs> that was interesting, uh, so we, we took a unscheduled zero because of rain. Uh, then I got sick. I got, uh, I think it was allergies because it only lasted a day, but man, and I know I'm, I'm congested now and I, I have that frequently, but this was something totally different. My nose, uh, so much stuff came out of, out of my nose over two days. It was crazy. Uh, I had a sore throat because of the drainage, uh, and I was coughing. And, uh, so, uh, one day I, I, I just told Cheek, I'm like, I got to stop. And we stopped, uh, we were supposed to do 16 or 17, and it was nine miles in, I think. And uh, we stopped around one or two. And I took a nap immediately. I took like a, an hour and a half long nap. And then I went to sleep at like seven. It didn't wake up till seven the next morning. Uh, and man, that, that uh, sleep uh, really helped, uh, helped me out. Uh, we did a short day the next day, another 10 or 11, something like that. Uh, got to sleep early again and, uh, you know, uh, tried, to, tried to drink a bunch of water. And uh, 
that issue kind of went away. So I still have a little lingering cough every now and then, but it's, uh, I, I'm not sick like I was. So that's cool. So anyway, I, when, we were, when I was doing the math, I, I don't ever tally up uh, what our weekly mileage is until these uh, summaries. And uh, so I was thinking, man, with, with the rain day and then with doing a 9 and an 11, uh, our mileage is, is going to drop back down because it had been steadily growing over the past few weeks. Uh, but I was surprised. We hit our best week ever uh, at 84.8 miles. Um, so uh, powering through, I guess, uh, which is cool. So uh, we spent during those 84.8 miles $401. And the reason I'm giggling is because, once again, I, I don't really look at what we spent until these summaries and uh, – it's it's really clear where our heart is <laughs> and where we spend money. So uh, we have four categories this this week. Uh, the first one is hostel. We paid $100 uh, to uh, uh, Woodchuck. That was for two days. <clears throat> uh, In-town food. This is this is where the, the big money comes in. Uh, we ate three times at the same place. Uh, and, and typically when Chica and I find something we enjoy... Uh, we don't want to uh, venture out because we already know we're going to like it somewhere. And Bobo McFarland's in uh, uh, Damascus was uh, a great place. Uh, they had uh, good beer on tap. Uh, they had excellent uh, pizza, wings, burgers. Actually, the burger I wouldn't get again, uh, but the wings and the pizza were great. Uh, Chica had a salad uh, and... and you know, a lot of these places uh, in these smaller towns don't have uh, a wine license, uh, especially back in uh, Tennessee and North Carolina. The, the liquor laws are really uh, stringent. Uh, so she uh, really enjoyed getting to have a glass of wine. So we spent $178 <coughs> over three, three visits there. The last visit was in the evening with our, our friends uh, Sushi Row, Roar, and Mystic. And uh, we were at a table just uh, right next to the karaoke. And about, I don't know, 8 o'clock at night, the karaoke kicked up. And I got to tell you, uh, Damascus locals have some talent. Uh, usually I expect karaoke to be just awful. And uh, we had a blast uh, watching some really great singers uh, sing. And then, then some hikers got up. Some, some did great. Some not so great. Anyway. So, um, looking at the mileage, 401 miles, uh, and spending, uh, I'm sorry, spending $401 over 84.8 miles, <coughs> that breaks down to uh, $2.38 per person per mile. Uh, and that's kind of our, our goal is, is around two twenty, two thirty, something like that. So as, as we are, Kicking up the mileage, we're finding it easier to hit our budget, uh, even though we're spending crazy. Shoot, I always do this. I didn't tell you all the other categories. <laughs> so 178 for in-town food. <coughs> Resupply, uh, we spent uh, $25, uh, and that was offset a little bit because uh, 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 Jen's mom, Mary, uh, graciously sent us uh, some Mountain House meals. Uh, and we had a friend, uh, Christina and Rod, uh, who sent us a huge care package. And so resupply was very minimal. Uh, and a lot of the a lot of the resupply was things like a um, a knee brace for Chica, uh, and uh, some nose spray for me, and just little things that that really have nothing to do with eating on the trail. Um, two other two other buckets. Uh, we sent some gear home, uh, put that in one of uh, our other videos, uh, so that cost $15 to send that home, but it lightened my load by about five pounds, which was nice. Uh, and then uh, Chica has really battled foot pain, uh, so we went into one of the outfitters. Damascus has like four different outfitters, and um, uh, she bought uh, some insoles, uh, some some super feet low pro profile insoles and those are uh, taking away uh, most of her feet pain and then adding a new one in so she has since taped the top of her foot 
uh, to correct um, this one new pain that, that doesn't happen too frequently, and that seems to be working. So uh, feet are, you know, feet are the Achilles heel of long distance hiking, and uh, you really have to deal with pain in them. Um, so also on the gear front, uh, I spent 25 bucks on this shirt. Um, and it's a little expensive for a shirt, but since I sent all my other gear home, I wanted a shirt to wear in town, a shirt to, um, uh, wear at night. Uh, and, and my smart wool shirt had ripped in the washing machine last week and just was torn to shreds. There was no salvaging it. Um, and we met this artist who has an artist shop in Damascus and, and I'm, I'm a sucker for, uh, supporting, um, artists and uh, people who are uh, self-employed and, and doing their deal. And so we went into a shop and uh, he showed us, uh, showed us his, his workspace and, and uh, you know, the shirt was 23 bucks. I had 25 bucks on me. I said, you know, keep the change. Um, you know, anything I can do to help. Uh, I could not buy the, you know, expensive art uh, and send it home. But uh, man, some of it was just Beautiful. He did these wo woven uh, nautilus-shaped baskets, uh, which were pretty cool. Uh, okay, so milestone. Well, oh, going back one more step. Uh, so for the trip, for eight weeks of being on the trail, we spent twenty-nine hundred and sixty-nine dollars on the trail. Uh, that works out to two dollars and eighty-four cents uh, per person per mile. Uh, and if you've been following along each week, that 284 has been getting lower and lower and lower. Uh, it was up to 350 or something like that uh, a couple weeks back. So uh, I really think us I think moving forward we'll be getting into 100 mile weeks uh, soon. Uh, we're feeling strong, uh, and uh, you know the 16 and 17 mile days are becoming the norm, and it's it's so incredible. Thinking back to the first couple of weeks where, where we're doing, trying to do eight miles and getting through the day and saying, holy cow, how are we ever going to do a 15-mile day? How can, we, how can we make it to Maine uh, before mid-October? How are we going to do this? Uh, and now we can see our bodies are changing. We've lost weight. Um, our, we're stronger. Uh, and, um, you know, it's... Uh, like I said, you know, a 16 or 17 mile day is not the end of the world. And it's it's kind of uh, our daily day uh, unless something crazy like a, a sinus attack happens. So uh, so we've had our biggest uh, milestones, biggest mile week uh, so far on the trail. Uh, we hit the 500 mile mark uh, and that that was a great feeling. And what was, what was weird about that is, you know, we've been updating you almost every 100 miles as, as a milestone. And it's interesting how, how quickly those milestones are coming up now and looking back at how, how long it seemed to take the first 100 miles to get through. Uh, so it, it's a weird feeling because, I mean, the first 100 miles is like, like now it's, it was like walking in molasses, but now we're, we're, we're kicking them out pretty quick. Um, and uh, the other milestone, I think getting to Damascus was, was pretty cool. Uh, it's a great town. It's a very active town. Like I said, there's uh, three or four outfitters. Uh, the Virginia Creeper Trail is a big deal. So you have this duality between um, bikers and um, AT hikers. So you have you have a, a nice meshing of uh, outdoorsiness to the town. Okay, so uh, let's get to the questions. Uh, Fifteen more says we stayed at a hostel uh, that we couldn't wait to leave. Which one was that? Um, it could only be one because there's only one that we really did not enjoy, and that was Standing Bear. And ironically, uh, although we couldn't wait to leave, we did. We spent three nights there, uh, almost three hundred dollars. Uh, worth of our money there, uh, but it was better than being in, in thunderstorm rain. Uh, but it's it's still uh, is the only hostel that I would not stay in again. Uh, Terry Case, uh, what videos did we watch to prepare um, for 
our trip. And I discussed this in one of the week summary. And, and since I'm too lazy to go back and see which week it is to tell Terry, uh, I'm just going to go through them again real quick. Um, we really enjoyed uh, Darwin on the trail. Uh, we watched uh, Kiwi in the beginning uh, before we left for the trail. Um, we watched a, a couple called Hike and Tell. Um, another couple called Harper's Terry. Um, we watched... Uh, hold on. Okay. We, we watched uh, also Ryan Johnson, uh, Crystal Weaver... Um, and Jacob Downing, uh, and he had someone that he hiked with who also had a channel, and we watched some of his stuff. I can't remember his name, but both those guys, uh, Jacob Downing's buddy. Oh, I don't yeah, she. Craig M too. Oh yeah, and we also watched Craig M. Uh, Jacob Downing and his buddy are now doing the PCT, I believe. Uh, so that's kind of the the quick group. Uh, a couple years back, uh, we started with. Um, Redbeard, uh, follow Redbeard, um, and I think that's it. There's so many that we watched, but that that group that I just gave you are ones that we watched uh, religiously uh, before the trail, uh, and really uh, some of them we watched because we thought they were um, humorous or, or fun to watch. Some of them were very informative, uh, so, you know, those, those are those. Uh, Terry also asks, uh, have we read the book Where's the Next Shelter by Gary Sizer? And oddly enough, uh, before we left, our friend in Asheville um, wanted to send us a gift, and she ran into Gary at <coughs> a book signing and had, had a, a book um, inscribed to us and sent it to us as a, as a you know, Happy Trails uh, gift. And so on the Greyhound bus here, uh, we read the book, and, and, and I, I really enjoyed it, and Chica did as well. So thanks, thanks for recommending that. Um, Barb asked, does Chica use or like her umbrella in the rain? Uh, usually, uh, the umbrella gets used by me, and it's usually in the rain, and we're in a town. Um, rarely on the trail have, has she used it. She's been using her new rain jacket. Um, she's keeping the umbrella around uh, to see uh, if she can use it during the, the summer months and see if that can help with the heat a little bit. Um, I also had an umbrella uh, and chose not to bring it, and I do not regret that decision. Roger says, during our gear research, did we consider REI gear? Um, we considered it. Uh, there was a website that we used, Outdoor Gear Lab, I believe is the name of it, and it basically ranks gear based on uh, what it is, you know, two-person tent, three-person tent, uh, rain pants, <coughs> all that stuff. Um, we used that to kind of narrow down our approach. So, uh, and last time I believe it was, I talked about kind of how we chose our gear, uh, cost, durability, um, weight, uh, functionality, all, all those things kind of combined. Uh, and depending on what the piece of gear was, different things were weighted differently. Um, so, so I think we did look at some REI gear, uh, but uh, for our backpacks, we went, I went with, with um, Gossamer gear, which is kind of a, a cottage industry type uh, gear maker. I've been happy with it, uh, 75%, I guess. Uh, it gives me shoulder pains, and I thought, you know, once I got the weight down to about 25 pounds, that would go away. Uh, it has not. Uh, it's not distracting enough or um, hurting me enough to change, uh, but it is uh, kind of disappointing. It's, it's a frameless pack. Uh, it does have a, a, a wire stay in it uh, that tries to give it some support, uh, but, but the weight is, is pretty much on my shoulders. Part of the problem, too, and I'm going to have to order a new uh, waist belt. One of the great design aspects of the Mariposa is the weight belt comes off. So uh, I started with a large, and now I'm at the end of my rope. 
literally because because my waist has shrunk so much and I need to get a medium uh, and I can switch that out uh, on other backpacks once you're done you're done and you got to get a new backpack um, so I'm thinking maybe if I can cinch that down a little bit tighter around my hips uh, let the weight sit on my hips also I'm thinking there's a huge um, uh, uh, pocket on the left side and it holds our tent and our tents a three-person copper spur three tent uh, that weighs four pounds so that happens to be the shoulder that that hurts so I'm thinking maybe if I take that tent out and put it uh, you know lash it to the bottom uh, and and redistribute the weight a little bit and see see if I play around with that if that changes it um, so going back to your question, sorry, Roger, I got off, off uh, topic. We, we spent money at REI. Uh, we spent a lot of money at REI. Uh, uh, we did not buy any REI equipment. Um, I think Chica bought an REI Puffy, and I, after wearing it for a couple weeks in the winter in Wisconsin, decided it wasn't right for her, and REI has a great return policy. And she returned it and got uh, the puffy she has now, which is the Ghost Whisper. <coughs> Other than that, um, we did not buy any REI-specific gear. So that's it for this wrap-up. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Give me a thumbs down if you don't. Uh, subscribe if you haven't and you want to get our updates. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you down the road, and um, we're, we're blasting you with a bunch of videos because we're here in Marion for the night, and we have good Wi-Fi, so we can, we can do that. So we'll see you guys next week. Bye.